Okay, in this video, I'm gonna walk through how I recently used Gaia GPS in kind of an innovative way, and specifically looking at one of the uh, sets of map layers that they have on Gaia with respect to historical data. They're called historical topo maps, and, and they look like this in your map layers database. So they have um, historical topos from 1900, 1930, 1960, and 1980. And so these are the USGS topo maps from those periods of time. And it's very interesting to look back and use them to scout potential paths of least resistance. And that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. So I was looking for a, a place to hike near my home. I, I love hiking close to home because it gets me out more and um, it just helps me appreciate my local landscape a bit. So I was exploring this particular area because I love camping on peaks, passes, and ridges. And so I found this pass and you can see that right here where the topo lines uh, converge at a low point in this ridge right here. And so I thought, oh, let's, let's see if this is a campable location. Some of these aren't, they're very densely timbered. And I was looking to see, okay, there's, there's a, the appearance of a meadow emanating from the uh, southwest side of the pass, southeast side of the pass on down. So maybe, maybe there was some camping in here. So the next step I do then to evaluate this is to turn down whatever your base map is, which in my case is Gaia Topo, and take a look at where the pass is located. And so here's the pass right here. And so you can see that there's some open area on the pass and it looks like a very campable location. So uh, this is definitely a destination I wanted to look at. Now, if we look back at the topo, uh, one would believe that, okay, this is gonna require a bushwhack up a densely timbered uh, valley right here to get to the pass. And so I was prepared for a bushwhack, but when I was investigating the satellite map, I was noting this line through here and thought that looked unusual. So as I zoomed in, you can see that this is a very unusual natural uh, landscape feature. So it made me think that maybe it's an old cut of some type. Um, some of these were made for power lines. Some were made for logging roads. Uh, trail corridors that aren't maintained and whatnot. So that that was very interesting to me. And so I wanted to see since this this path or whatever this was did not appear anywhere on the topo map. I wanted to see if it was available anywhere else. So the first place I usually look is the USGS topo maps. So there's the current USGS topo. And as you can see, there's nothing there. And so then I went in and looked at the 1980 and the 1960, 1930, and the 1900 topo maps. And they're not in the last two, but they are in the earlier ones, the 1900 and 1930 maps. So if we turn off the USGS topo layer, look at that. We can see an old roadbed leading up to the pass. And so if we turn back on the satellite layer slowly, we can see that roadbed approximately follows that line cut, but obviously, you know, in 1900, they didn't have the ability to locate um, man-made features or natural features for that matter, precisely the way they do today. So it's not gonna follow it precisely, but clearly there's an old roadbed leading up there. And so I wanted to to explore this area and I, I went and and created my route Let's turn down the topo layer and turn up the sat layer. So I created my route based on the location of this, this path. And so if we go to the route creation tool in Gaia, this is a, this red line up near the top of the screen is a trail corridor. So I'll start my route there and then I'm going to create it approximately along the line of that road corridor. just like that. And 
that last dot is the location where I actually camped. And so this allowed me to avoid a, a, an unnecessary bushwhack and find a neat decommissioned route up to a place that nobody visits. So there's, there was no footprints up here, no garbage, no sign that there was anybody ever up here. I, I suspect that some hunters might explore this area in the fall. Um, and they, some old timers may know about this roadbed, but, uh, there's no other indication other than what you find on the historical topo maps from 1930 or earlier that this roadbed even existed. So this was a really neat gem to find. And there's a photograph of my camp up at this pass. So it was a, it was a really glorious night in the backcountry, away from everybody during the peak of backpacking season here in Northern Colorado. So uh, a great opportunity to explore using Gaia GPS and historical topo maps. And I apologize for blurring out the uh, tent in the photo. Uh, I can't show this to the public yet. It's under embargo from the manufacturer, but we'll be releasing some information about this tent on June 14th. So stay tuned at backpackandlight.com and you'll see this very special Dyneema Composite Fabrics tent that's brand new on the market. If you'd like to learn more about Gaia GPS and some of its nuances and how to use it for more advanced navigation or a basic primer into how to use Gaia GPS if you're new to it, be sure to check out Backpacking Lights How to Use Gaia GPS Masterclass. I'll link that below in the video description and we'd love to have you join us on that course. It's a very comprehensive online course. It's self-paced, lots of tutorials in there um, about how to use Gaia GPS and how to get the most out of it for planning, tracking, and navigation. Thanks for watching.